Have you ever wondered how to make boat curtains? Join me and find out. New curtains. Stage one, measurements taken and calculations for fabric made. Stage two, location of fabric. Uh, these are old curtains that my parents had in storage and lucky for me, didn't want anymore, so I'm like happy days. Now, stage three is measuring up said fabric, marking it off with my tailor's shop, and uh, setting up ready to roll to get the, um, the iron out and the, uh, uh, the sewing machine going, and get on with our curtain design for our wave dancer. According to um, instructions, my fabric measurements are as such uh, that the width is 3 inches out the side of the window multiplied by 1.5 and then add an inch onto that measurement. And then the length is the window and 3 inches either side of it plus another 7 inches um, onto the bottom. So I have made my calculations and I am ready to measure out and cut. Measure it twice, cut once is an adage that my father uses a lot. Whether it is cutting carpets, wallpaper, fabric, timber, anything. And not being familiar with upholstery and fabric projects, I'm taking that advice very much to heart. I am um, a sheet of baking paper or parchment paper underneath the fabric because it's light fabric. And just in case um, the mark goes through from my sharpie, um, I discovered the uh, tailor's chalk is useless on this fabric. I can't see it. So um, and pen is pretty much the same. Um, so I'm using my trusty Sharpie. So I've measured out every six inches or so across the width of the fabric and left a little dot. And then I've been joining the dots with my trusty steel ruler. So that is the fabric for the V cap and hatch marked out and the next thing is the scary process of cutting yikes not looking forward to that i am terrified <laughs> um it's gas when you're looking at this up close it looks like oh gosh a little wave in the line but um i'm hoping it's just the uh psychedelic material that is throwing my eye off. Anyway, we shall find out. <laughs> I've measured it like so many uh, like three or four times to make sure that I have my dots exactly where they need to be. So yeah. And anyway, sure if I make a millimeter or two of a mistake somewhere, um it's gonna be hidden in the hem anyway, so it will be bad um, on the, the big scheme of things. So that's first cushion or um, curtain measured out. Moving on to the next set of measurements. Making the first cut is daunting. I am using the scissors from my splicing kit because it is the sharpest scissors I have in the entire house. And um, I want to make sure that I have a nice clean line. But uh, what you're looking at here is this is for the 
the hatch in the bee cabin. And then on the other side um, is the, um, the fabric for the two portholes of the bee cabin. Um, which I have marked out and will be cutting into shape. Now I know I have excess fabric according to the um, instructions that I got off a um, sewing channel on YouTube, uh, the sewing room, and um, I, uh, when the fabric is all laid out flat, the amount of material required to cover a small window looks massive. and then you stitch. For a porthole in the saloon, this seems to be a massive amount of fabric. And uh, hopefully, I have miscalculated. So with my trusty iron, I have double rolled this hem and pressed into place at each roll and I'm about to stitch the hem on just along here the whole way around on all four sides of the curtain and um, after that once that is completed on my two long sides I will fold in a three inch seam pin it and then stitch that into place and because um, on both sides I plan on having uh, the, the cable running through so that it is held in place because as everybody knows both side walls are not flat <laughs> they have an angle on them so I want to make sure that they're kept in alongside the wall so hence the reason why the double wire on both sides I ran into a slight problem my sewing machine hates me so I am now hand stitching my hems uh, I spent yesterday evening um, uh, ironing all my hem seams so that they will lie flat and not be moving on me whilst I am trying to stitch and then I will put in a um, I'm just doing a tacking stitch here um, just to hold the hem in place My sewing classes in primary school are coming back to me. Um, if you've seen any of my other hand sewing in the videos, for example, the one where I fix the um, sail bag zipper, um, you'll see that I am not a natural seamstress. 
after many expletives, um, I have discovered what was causing my um, my problem. The the thread coming down from the needle to the bobbin chamber has been jamming and getting all knotted up up here. So uh, that has not helped me in the least. Um, learning how to use a, um, a sewing machine. It is just a pain at the moment. So I am going to resort to hand stitching my hems. And so far, so good. I have almost the whole way around. I just have one short side and a little bit of this side to finish. Um, I'm just using um, a tacking stitch, which with this fabric and colour thread, you can barely make out. So, um, yeah, at least I'm progressing until I figure out what is causing my problems with this stupid machine. Our curtains are finally finished, hand stitched. I have the hatch, two portholes for the B cabin, watch berth, hatch, and four porthole curtains for the saloon. All finished. I just need to put heading tape on them and then they are ready to hang. Yay! Okay, so now that I have all the hems done and the rod pockets, um, so on, the three inch turn downs. It is now time to put on the heading tape and uh, I am connecting on both sides of the curtain because of the angle of wall on the boat. So um, yeah, I have a lot of heading tape to stitch onto the back side of these curtains now, but um, looking forward to seeing this lot up in action. As I said already, um, I'm thinking I might actually end up dividing this in two because that is a lot of fabric for one portal in the saloon and it just might look better to have the uniformity of a curtain on either side of the window. So, um, because I'm hand stitching, this project has taken a lot longer than I was expecting to be doing with the machine. Um, <laughs> I basically didn't move uh, at all all day um, all day Wednesday and um, a good bit of yesterday as well um, and so yeah I started yesterday evening on um, the heading tape I went over to Harry Curry's to uh, pick up the heading tape and the little doohickeys for attaching onto the wire. And I have my wire with self adhesive hooks ordered through Amazon because um, I don't want to be responsible for drilling um, into the headlining. Of wave dancer so for the time being at least until we get used to having curtains I have the
plan of attaching them with self-adhesive hooks and a little hook and eye wire on the bolt. So Good morning. Um, today I am bringing up um, my curtains to get fitted and um, check that they they work <laughs> properly. Um, and also I am bringing up um, starting to bring up the everything that I had taken off the boat um, when I was doing a full scrub down and decluttering. So uh, yeah, um, the contents for the galley are coming back up again today and a few other bits and bobs as we start to prepare for launch day. Woo! Can't wait! Um, John is taking a few days off work so uh, we're going to get the, the keel finished and then we'll be able to launch. So fingers crossed this time next week we'll, we'll, we'll be in the water. And I cannot wait because um, uh, summer holidays are official from uh, school so there are no restrictions on time anymore. I'm not clock watching so it means I can get up and get my few jobs done during the day and um, uh, weekends we can go sailing and occasional evenings as well. Um, depending on how uh, John's work life balance kicks in but uh, yeah every weekend from now on definitely we will be uh, on the water um, and weather permitting of course and uh, if weather doesn't permit then we can uh, make alternative plans but yeah it's starting to get exciting!